Northwest Liberty News. Picking the lock on the shackles of tyranny. Machines are going to fail. And the system's going to fail. The past is past, the future's now. Don't look at me. I think these people are completely nuts. Sometimes trouble just follows a man. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Can't you stop your lips from flapping for two little minutes? It's because I'm white. I'm a man. I'm sensitive. I need to feel loved. I need to be desired. Hey, I'm rapidly becoming a big underground success in this. Oh, that's a question of methods. Everybody wants results, but nobody wants to do what they have to do to get them done. And now, coming to you live from Kalispell, Montana, brought to you by Northwest Liberty News, it's Montana Gazette Radio with your host, James White. Host James White, this is Montana Gazette Radio. Thanks so much for joining us here live on the broadcast here on the 16th day of January 2021. And yes, it's already halfway through January in 2021 as we try to put 2020 in our rear view mirror and uh, move on. But I tell you, it's just been, it's, it's, 2021's been as crazy as 2020 already. Uh, we have uh, a couple of great fellows on the show today with us. It's going to help put a little bit of sanity into things. And I'm talking about Commissioner Randy Pinocchi. They've both been guests on my broadcast before. And uh, Brad Cheetah from the Montana Legislature. I'm going to just go quickly through the bios here. They're, as I said, they've both been on before. And I'll bring them on. The, actually, I can bring them on here right now. And then uh, let, me, uh, let me bring, uh, let me see here. There we go right there. And I think I almost got this going here. There we go, Brad and you guys. Let me give you guys both proper introductions. And I will uh, we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, so joining us, as I stated, is uh, Brad uh, Brad Sheeta and Randy Pinocchi. Randy Pinocchi is a, Mon a Montana Public Service Commissioner. He's He was elected to serve on the Public Service Commission District 1 in 2018. District 1 encompasses 19 counties, which is the largest number of counties and the most square miles of any PCS uh, district, PSC district. And Brad Cheeta is a third-term legislator. Maybe now that's maybe this is an old bio, Brad. You'll have to let me know. And was a majority leader in the 2019 legislature Brad is on the Appropriations Committee for two terms and has leadership experience. He's also on the House Rules and Education Committees. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here today on the broadcast. We're here to talk about the uh, the censorship and the big tech censorship specifically as it pertains to uh, to the state of Montana here. And I know we're not going to sit back on our laurels uh, as not only uh, you know good conservatives, but basically people that believe in the freedom of speech uh, and, and the Constitution and Bill of Rights, we're going to not stand back and just take that. So I want to have both you gentlemen here on uh, the show today to talk about it. Thanks so much, uh, you guys, for coming on today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Good to be on. Okay, well, uh, Commissioner Pinochet, let's start with you. You're on the Public Service Commission, and uh, that is, you know, the the, the Internet, the, uh, the the transmission of stuff across the, 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 the wire, the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the cable wire or the Internet, you know, would think that would fall under the purview of the Public Service Commission. Uh, we're going to play a video here just in a moment of uh, the, the uh, CEO of Twitter talking about how they're going to be coming, trying to clamp down on conservatives. First of all, let's kick it off. Uh, Commissioner Pinocchi, give us your overall view of this of the situation that we're in now with the censorship. They, they, they cut Parler completely out. They've kicked President Trump, the president of the United States. They've kicked him off social media, basically. And it's, they've almost just moved into the position of our overlords that they can they can determine what we see and don't see. Commissioner Pinochet, start off with you. What do you think about uh, the state of things here with big tech and the censorship? Just to just to, just to start off. On your microphone. Let me let me unmute your microphone. Hold that thought. There you go. Okay, you should be at. There you go, Commissioner. Thanks so much. Sorry for that. Go right ahead. All right. So to get the listeners up to speed, social media has publicly uh, admitted that they are limiting free speech to conservatives. Uh, this is uh, actually very large news. Everybody should be very concerned about this. Uh, social media is so important in day-to-day -day life that it has to be looked at as absolutely treating everybody fairly and equally. You certainly wouldn't want to ban internet access to, say, a church 
uh, while giving it to another group. And as a public service commissioner in charge of utilities, I think the question now before us, should the public service commission look over social media and internet as a public utility? And if we're gonna see abuses in power, uh, I think the answer to that is yes. And uh, we're gonna look at that evidence to be true. Uh, and that's what you're gonna play for us now. And then we'll talk about actions that can be taken. Well, Brad, before we do play that clip from uh, the Jack Dorsey clip, let's, uh, let's throw it over to you and ask you sort of the same question. You uh, obviously, being a constitutional guy, uh, we've I've interviewed you numerous times. I know this doesn't probably set well with you. And specifically, um, we're, we're talking about, and I'll, I'll play the, uh, I'll, I'll click over to the, to the uh, web story here in a moment, uh, Montana Daily Gazette, which is sort of the, the, sort of the base for this radio show here. Um, they are, the mail chip now has stopped them from sending out information I, I guess unless it's looked at by their fact checker first, or they they real they real they they, they uh, determine that it's real news, that's a dangerous road to go down, is it not, Brad? When when the the some other entity that's not uh, consti- bound by the Constitution starts deciding what you should see and what I should see and what conservatives should see, that's a that's a very slippery slope to go down, my friend. Would you agree? I'm not really sure that uh, it's a slippery slope or maybe just a it's uh, uh, you know, this limitation of speech is the grease on the flagpole to hell. I mean, it just seems like we are, um, you know, That's we put one. ourselves in a position where we've allowed big tech companies to determine what we can and cannot say or what we can and cannot do. I have a friend who posted a, a, a message about the young lady who was uh, unfortunately and tragically shot and killed uh, during the uh, the demonstrations in DC and he was sh- he was uh, shut down by Facebook for for posting something that just said let's honor her life so it, to me you know we, we are going back to uh, or we are entering days I shouldn't say going back to entering days that are eerily reminiscent reminiscent of what we've seen in socialist Marxist countries throughout the world you know not to um, eliminate or remove countries like Germany and Russia, who have taken dissidents and have told them, sorry, you can't speak up freely. Instead of being sent to a gulag, we're, you know, we're essentially being forced uh, to be silenced and, and, and we're not being seen or heard, but the effect is the same. People are being uh, deprived of their opportunity to speak. And I, I wanted to, to say uh, in uh, uh, gratitude to the work that uh, Commissioner Pinozzi has done, there isn't anybody on the Public Service Commission that works as hard as Randy. And I think he's got a couple of new members who are going to push him because I think uh, Commissioner Fielder and Commissioner Brown are both individuals who are going to be hard workers. They're going to be great representatives for the state of Montana, but there isn't anybody that works any harder, more diligently, or has the uh, desire to promote freedom among Montanans uh, to any greater extent than uh, than my good friend Randy Pinochet does. Well, yeah, you mentioned the uh, grease and the flagpole to hell. And what I was talking about Slippery Slope is now they're talking, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kurt Schilling, the World Series pitcher. They had the yeah. one with the blood on his ankle. Uh, it was iconic back then when he came out and pitched. Now AIG Insurance has canceled him because of his social media posts. We have, mm-hmm. of course, they've been eliminating uh, Trump uh, uh, golf uh, uh, places where he own, the owns golf courses. They've been pulling out of that. Two banks have decided not to work with him any longer. Um, we've got teachers that are being suspended from school or thinking about getting fired from school or at least threatened because they attended. They just attended the meeting in Washington. This is this is the beginning, as I stated. If we let things like this go, then pretty soon, they're you know they're gonna what they would like is for all conservatives to be in one big camp, languishing away uh, uh, in obscurity, while they control everything and we don't have a voice ever. I know that sounds like a dystopic uh, scene, but. I don't know if I'm too far off on that. So we have to stop this now. And then what we'll do is we'll play the uh, we'll play this video here from uh, I believe it's from Project Veritas. It is great work mm-hmm. they do there. Project Veritas. James O'Keefe can't say enough good things about the guy. Let's play this little two minute video here and uh, get both your comments on it of uh, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of um, of Twitter, talking about about uh, about censoring conservatives. Here we go. This should work. There we go. Do intend to do a full retro, as I said in my note, it is going to take some time. Um, and then the, the other thing, just to just to close out a little bit, we you know we we are focused on one account right now, but this is going to be much bigger than just one account, and it's going to go on for much 
longer than just this day, this week, in the next few weeks. It's going to go on beyond the inauguration. We have to expect that. We have to be ready for that. So the focus is certainly on this account and um, how it ties to real world violence, but also we need to think much longer term around how these dynamics play out over time. Um, I don't believe this is going away anytime soon. And the moves that we're making today uh, around uh, QAnon, for instance, is one such example of a much broader approach um, that we should be looking at um, and and going deeper on. So um, the team has a lot of work and a lot of focus on this particular issue. Uh, We also need to give them the space and the support to focus on the the much bigger picture um, because it is is not going away. Um, the, The U.S. is extremely divided. Platform is uh, showing that uh, every single day, and our role is to protect the integrity of that conversation uh, and do what we can to make sure that no one is being harmed uh, based off that. And, and that is the focus, and um, that is the, the color we want to provide. There you have it, Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, recorded by one of his own employees, an insider whistleblower at Twitter, recorded saying this is going to be much bigger than just one account, revealing some censorship. You can see our motto at Veritas, our organization protected by an army of citizen patriots. We've had over a dozen people reach out to us this week with video, evidence inside Twitter. Stay tuned. They may be private companies, but they have more power than all three branches of government. Veritas tips at ProtonMail.com. There you have it, guys. First of all, my hat's off again to James O'Keefe and the work that he does there at Project Veritas, man. I tell you, there's not a bigger patriot, I think, in the alternative media movement, well, not the mainstream media, than that guy. What's your thoughts about that, Brad? First off, um, they obviously are targeting conservatives, and they say that they are the arbiters, really, of the conversation, and they need to they need to interject themselves into the free speech of other Americans because they, for some reason, think that they have the ability to know better than all the rest of us, I guess. Uh, do you care to comment on that, Brad, then I'll go over to you, Commissioner Panucci. Real briefly, I will. You take a look at his, his, his statement that he made that he wants to protect people from harmful things that are being done, yet we know that uh, folks who are who are considered progressives, liberals, socialists, Marxists, whatever title they are currently using as their uh, title du jour, they're not being censored. You know, we, we see, you know, people sending out message at, you know, hashtag kill Trump, and nobody says anything about that. But when there is even the slightest uh, comment that can be taken uh, e- either literally as truthful, and it may be, or it can be taken out of context, then they jump all over that uh, that, content, that uh, comment if it's made by a conservative. But liberals get a free pass on all this. And it, hearing what he had to say was absolutely chilling. And you know, I, I, I'm just dumbfounded. don't know what else to say about that. Commissioner Perucci, back uh, over to you on that. Uh, there's been some talk about, you know, the, the Section 230 where they, uh, they're they supposed to be protected as a news platform, uh, meaning, I shouldn't say news platform, but they're sort of an open open platform where they can't be sued if someone puts something on there. But what they do is they, use, they take editorial control over things and omit certain things, uh, which makes them sort of a news agency, and then they lose that protection. That may not be the answer, you know, I don't pretend to know all about that, but there has to be some sort of a regulation, and states have power to regulate uh, utilities inside their own state, as you well know. Um, what's your uh, What's your thoughts about that video that we just saw, Commissioner? And how do you propose the the Public Service Commission moving forward is going to help uh, to help alleviate the censorship that he's obviously admitting to there, Jack Dorsey? Well, the first message I have is for the listeners: when we see something that's shocking we have to ask ourselves what part can i play to fix the problem i want the listeners to uh, say that each one of you can have a part to play as a public service commissioner i I try to apply what i can do to fix this problem in front of us i reach out to a, a good conservative legislator like representative cheetah and ask him to help and that I ask the listeners a part they can play is to reach out to your legislators that represent you and tell them to support this bill, 
which is going to give the Public Service Commission uh, a little more horsepower to regulate social media like a public utility. People, when a problem comes before us, the best encouragement I can ask everyone to do, what part can you play to fix it? The listeners have a part to play, Representative Cheetah has a part to play, and I have a part to play. I'm asking for a bill to give the Public Service Commission power to oversee social media, just like we have the power to oversee a natural gas company or a electric company. Keep in mind, people, when we first put the Public Service Commission in power back in the 1800s, we oversaw, oversaw railroads. We didn't have electricity yet. The Public Service Commission has to evolve as things change. Uh, now railroads don't really carry people, airplanes do, but we had to start regulating electricity to protect from a monopoly. If, if the power company raises the price of your electricity double, you have no choice because you only have one power company. I'm put in place to ensure they don't take advantage of the people. Well, the reason we have to evolve social media in the internet is used by anyone from the age of five years old to 100. There are more social media and internet users than all electric and natural gas customers combined. It's time the Public Service Commission evolves into protecting the public from a monopoly such as social media, where clearly, you know, they're discriminating against certain people. They're, uh, they're abusing their power. Uh, and put me to work, and you have to have the legislature draw the law and the wording, and I want the public to be involved and do their part and put me to work. And I want this legislation through immediately. Um, I want everybody to call your legislators, uh, your senators, your representatives, and let's get this uh, bill put forward, get the language right, everybody play a part, and let's fix the problem ahead of us. Representative Cheetah, you, um, as Randy stated, you know, the Public Service Commissioner is not the legislative arm. Um, they, they don't really do make the laws, the, the legislators do, your, yourself and the Senate. Um, is that something that you, you, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but in the, in the spirit of, 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 of protecting other Montanans free speech, is that something that you would consider what, uh, Commissioner Pinochet is talking about, uh, A and B, do you think that you'd have, uh, some, some cooperation with some of the other Montana legislators? Uh, cause it really doesn't matter if you're a conservative or Republican, uh, it's going to, or, or conservative or liberal, it's going to eventually come back to you as well. They'll shut you up too. If you think that, well, you know, liberals are like, well, we're going to get away with it. You may get, get away with it for, for, with, for, for now, but history dictates they'll be coming after you next. You'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll fall into the ax as well. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, um, representative Sheeta, do you, is that something that you would, you would look, you would be, uh, um, on board with? And do you think that other legislators would be on board with that type of legislation as well? Absolutely. And I think your last point, Jim, is very uh, important and very salient to what we're talking about here. There's never a, a time when one group can declare absolute victory in, in a, especially in a democratic republic like we have, because the pendulum is going to swing and at times there will be liberals in control and at times there will be conservatives in, in control. But what we have to shoot for more than anything else, and I appreciate Randy's words about you know, talking to the audience about what they can do, because the audience is really uh, the, the controlling agent in all of this. They're the ones that set the tone for what we do in the legislature, for what Randy uh, does as a commissioner on the Public Service Commission. When I, one of the things that, and to answer the first question about, do I think that there, there should be some legislation? We absolutely have to look at that and see what needs uh, there are for that particular type of legislation, because you have a company that has uh, a certain amount of insulation from uh, any kind of liability. They're protected from liability because they're not responsible for the content uh, that goes on in their platforms, yet they're now acting as uh, uh, an agent of change or getting involved in censoring or somehow you know, monitoring what is said or isn't said. And as we have companies like this who are, who are clearly monopolies, I mean, we can look at uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and say, who lives or what, what company exists in the, in the U.S. or in the world today that's a competing platform for them? And the answer is there is no one. So since they serve as a monopoly, 
And since they are uh, immune or have certain immunity to uh, an individual or a group going after them for censoring them and, and taking uh, civil or criminal action uh, in the courts against them, I think that there's very good cause to consider a bill that would give the Public Service Commission the ability to oversee the, the activities of these groups so that they don't act as uh, agents of censoring. Because again, as, as I started off by saying, these kinds of things are not going to happen in a vacuum and they're not going to be fixed at one point in time. It may be that on the national level, you have conservatives who are now in the minority or who are being abused. But, you know, th there have been classic examples in the past of people who were the power brokers on the more conservative side. And we don't want to see that. We think everyone should be uh, absolutely focused on fair and free speech with nobody impeding what we say as long as what I have to say or do uh, ends at the point in time where somebody else's rights begin. Commissioner, and we don't need to get into the minutia uh, of things specifically, but how would, uh, how would let's say, uh, sanctions against them if they did, if they did started, you know, uh, censoring conservatives or anyone really, what type of punitive, punitive uh, um, t uh, you know, um, uh, steps can you take as a public service commissioner? Can you find them? Uh, and I know, again, this is all, we don't have anything, this is all the very preliminary stages. We're just talking theoretically here. Would there be something where you could th find them? Would you be able to uh, prohibit their license to operate in Montana? Would you just be able to cut them off completely? How would the, you know, what's the hammer? You know, because you see a lot of stuff going on right now in Washington, and we know a lot of these people that we're seeing here are criminals. We know they've done criminal stuff. It's coming out, you know, regularly. Yet there seems to be no prosecution. No one seems to be, you know, getting getting uh, uh, getting prosecuted or arrested or indicted for these things generally. There's got to be some sort of a hammer. There's got to be some way to make them comply. Just as, again, theoretically speaking, would that be a fines? Would that be a, a licensure? Would that be, how would that work, Commissioner? Do you have any thoughts on that? I do, and great question. But let's start here. We, we, we have the choice of the federal government trying to fix the problem or the individual states trying to fix the problem. Uh, I'm a fan of the individual states trying to police it. And here's why. The Democrats have control of the presidency, the House and the Senate. They could be very one-sided. So I'm a believer that this needs to be policed by individual states under states' rights. The Public Service Commission is the perfect tool to do this because each state has oversight to their public service commission. Now, here's what's really important to answer your question. Each state can come up with their own way to punish or to regulate the utility. Uh, I call this giving um, teeth to uh, the issue. Uh, a fine is a great way to go to stop the, the utility or uh, let's say, um, the, in this case, uh, the business of internet or social media to have the ability to collect credit card information until they comply. The legislature has the ability to sit down and come up with how we're going to put teeth to the regulation. And keep in mind, we could study it for a couple of years and make changes in the next legislative session. The Public Service Commission cannot make law, and the legislation really tells the Public Service Commission what to do. You, the people, the listeners, have the ability to tell um, the legislators what you want them to do. I would love to hear from some of the, the constituents, the voters, on how they'd like them regulated, how to apply teeth to the bill. But yeah, my first reaction is heavy fines um, or the ability to stop the social media to be in the state uh, at all until they comply. Look, people, when you see discrimination, I mean, that would be like driving down the road and to see a business that said whites only. Okay, that's really what we're looking at here. This is very serious. Um, I could see social media saying we're not going to serve Christians or churches. They really have the ability to do anything they want. If they can go down this road, uh, it has to be stopped. It has to be regulated. And the legislature has the ability to um, enforce any way they see fit. Uh, so uh, I'm really open to um, 
some great ideas that could come uh, from the legislation and, of, and, and of course, the, the taxpayers. Well, here we go, folks. I, I, fellas, I know you guys are uh, been working hard all week, and uh, you're probably trying to spend some time with your families here in the weekend. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up here. But before we we do, I have a, just a, two final questions for each one of you. Uh, basically, the same question. You guys can just uh, answer it however you like. What what uh, we want to be a we are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I think we want. I do, and I, I think you fellas do as well want the people to be involved we want this to be the people's government because i think that's the one the the government that operates the best uh um representative Sheeta, how would you let how would you d d direct people or instruct people that are interested in not only this issue but other issues that they uh, that that you know because that's that's what happens you see something you don't like or something you think is wrong then you talk to your your uh, your legislator uh, if they think, you know, if they come together, you guys come together, they can introduce a bill and one person or, or a group of people can make a change if they do it the right way. What would you say, um, a Representative Sheeta, to people out there that are watching this video, how can they, what's their next step to get involved? Because I think that you want that like we all do. What would you say to that, Brad? First and foremost, yeah, it's a great, great question, great comment. <clears throat> Individuals need to contact their uh, their elected leaders. They need to do it on the city, county, and state level. So if they go to the website, uh, uh, leg.mt.gov, they can find every one of their legislators. I know I've had some people who have said, I've been hard to find, and, and they wondered, you know, after I've made comments, if if I'm hiding out. I'm not hiding out from anybody. My All my information is published. And then go to that website and find it, uh, find the uh, email addresses for legislators. It's typically their first name followed by a period, followed by their last name at mtleg.gov. So they should go there. They should call them up. They, they can text, email. They can, uh, um, you know, call them up and just tell them what what is on their minds. And, and tell them how important it is for certain steps to be taken. Because obviously the, the way that a lot of people are trying to express their feelings now are being thwarted by these big media companies and people are being shut out of the opportunity to communicate. So the, the best way to do that is to go to their elected officials and say, look, I don't believe that a business should, should be allowed to tell me what I can, uh, can and can't say on my own site, provided I'm not violating the rights of anybody else. So the, the optimum thing to do is to, is to connect with your elected legislators and tell them how you feel about these particular issues. So that, that would be my number one comment. It always is reach out to your legislators and tell them what your thoughts are and guide and direct them because, you know, it's not necessarily just the squeaky wheel, but it's, it's the volume of people that contact folks to let them know why they believe that doing something or not doing something is important. I'm going to tweak that just a little bit for you, uh, uh, commissioner. You're not an uh, you're not you're elected you're elected of course, but you're not a lawmaker as you so aptly stated. But that doesn't mean that you can't still. You're I mean, public service commissioners are very approachable. You still can be reached. I think you have regular. Uh, I if I remember correctly, I know you have either like town halls or you have uh, uh, meetings. I know it's now with the COVID thing. I don't know if you still do that anymore, but I know at some point you used to. My point, I guess, being is that you, uh, just because you're the public service commissioner doesn't mean that you're not approachable as well. I mean, you have communication lines where people can reach out to you as well, just like they would, just like they would represent uh, Sheeta. Is that correct? I just had a town hall meeting uh, last Thursday, and I have continued to do my town halls through the COVID um, crisis and will continue to do them. Uh, anyone can call me and uh, on, I'm pretty much ready to pack up and, and talk about a topic. One of the things I think is important here is uh, I'm, I hope to be the first public service commissioner to come forward and lock horns with social media on this issue. I'm challenging uh, commissioners and representatives to put together the, the best bill that we can that other states could follow. I want Montana to be a role model for other states to follow to um, challenge social media to be fair. I'm challenging the Public Service Commission offices around the United States to duplicate what we're doing and uh, let's get this problem fixed quickly and uh, um, set an example uh, for everyone to follow. Hey, before we go, uh, you guys give out uh, websites or emails or anything that where people can reach uh, you and get in touch with you, anything like that. We'll give you both opportunity to to give those out before we uh, before we let you go. Brad, go ahead. We'll start with you, and then we'll finish up with you, Commissioner Pinochi. 
Sorry, well, sorry for the interruption. I had to get out. I have uh, so one of my grandchildren showed up at the door, so we were just opening the door to make sure that <laughs> they right. could get in the house. So. That's all good. Yeah, I, again, the uh, you know if they go to leg.mt.gov, they can they can contact a legislator because all of our information is is located there, and and I put out my my personal cell phone because I, I want people to have access to me. So, understanding the question, you know, what's what's the best way to reach us? Go go right to the state website to find us because every legislator is listed there and and their uh, contact information is there. There's an address when we're in session. Which is PO Box 200 400 Helena, and it's I think it's 59620 0400, and they can contact legislators. They can send messages during the day to us while while we're on the House floor in support of or in opposition to bills. So it's you know, it's very easy for folks to reach out and find us. We're not hiding anywhere, and I I really appreciate hearing from individuals, especially when they take time to write a message that. Uh, was conceived in their own mind. It's not just a cut and paste message that came from some group that that's getting behind a particular issue. It carries more weight when somebody takes two minutes to say, hey, look, I know you're getting bombarded, but here's how I feel about this particular bill. I'd really like to, you know, to consider passing it or to, uh, to uh, voting against it. So that's the easiest way for people to reach me and any other legislator who serves either in the House or the Senate. David, anything to add to that, Commissioner? Well, I sure want to encourage all legislators in the Senate, in the House, also past legislators and senators to get with Representative Cheetah with full support behind this bill. I'm expecting a large amount of co-sponsors to his bill. Anyone that would like to reach me, my personal cell phone, 406-231-3649. I am also, also use social media. I have uh, two or three Facebook pages. Um, one for the Public Service Commission, one private, and, and one when I used to serve in the legislation. And sure want to tell the listeners that I had the pleasure of serving with um, Representative Brad Cheetah, and I sat next to him in the 2015 legislative session. And uh, I know how the legislature works, and I'm looking forward to working with them to protect not only Montana, but set an example for the rest of the United States to follow on meeting uh, what uh, demands we have to, to meet uh, to get social media put on the right track. Folks, these aren't uh, politicians here. These are statesmen, and we so much appreciate having them both here on the show. Fe uh, fellas, again, appreciate you coming here live with me on a Saturday. Uh, this is a very pressing and important issue, and I appreciate you recognizing that and taking time away from your families on the little bit of a break you get here, I know this weekend before you have to probably back to the legislature. So we uh, so much appreciate you guys both coming in and uh, we we'll hopefully have a chance to speak to you fellows as uh, we go forward as the session goes on. We hope we have you both back on the air again. Thanks so very much. Well, it's great to be with two great Americans like Jim White and Randy Pinochet. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Oh, you're a good guy, Brad. We appreciate that. Commissioner Pinochet, thanks so much for being here as always. We we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, fellas. I have a get together at seven o'clock tonight at Debbie Briscoe's house in Sun River, and we're going to go over what we went over here today. She called and set that up a few days ago. Okay, so yeah. So you want to? So tonight at seven o'clock, you're going to be out uh, out there uh, at where again? Uh, Debbie Briscoe's house. It's posted on my Facebook page. Anyone's invited. And this is an example where someone's called and said, "Would you, uh, you know, get together and we can have a gathering at my home?" I said, "Absolutely." And uh, this is going to be a, a big topic, I'm sure tonight. So. Yeah, this is what this is what really state this is what statesmen do, uh, folks. They don't they don't you know uh, like they do in Washington. You know, take you know 47 weeks vacation. I mean, this is this the, the real people are in your community. That's where you need to concentrate on. Forget about Washington; it's thousands of miles away. Worry about people that's right around your neighborhood because that's the people that make the difference. Fellows, I think really appreciate you coming on the show. Look forward to talking to you both again real soon. God bless you both. God bless Thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, folks, there goes a couple of great Americans right there. That's for sure. Uh, Commissioner Randy Pinochi and uh, uh, Brad Cheetah. We so much appreciate them coming on the show with us. And uh, they are going to take a stand here against social media, against the censorship here in Montana. And uh, I would encourage all of you to, to, uh, to call your legislators and have them do the same thing. I, I mean, together we are, together we are strong separately you know divide and conquer when they divide us up they can conquer us if we come together not only is in a community we'll come together as a state and then collectively we can stop this uh, we can stop this tyranny but it's going to take us 
Got to take us. Donald Trump can't do everything. He can't. He's not. He's not omnipotent. He's not. He's not everywhere. He's not. You know. He's, you have to do it. It's you. It's the person in the mirror. That's who. That's who you really have to. Don't wait for headquarters. I got a call. Appreciate you looking in here today on the show. Uh, thanks so much for my to my guests, Commissioner Randy Pinocchi and uh, uh, and uh, Representative Brad Cheetah. You can check us out over at MontanaGazetteRadio.com, MontanaGazetteRadio.com, or MontanaDailyGazette.com. If you want to advertise with us over there on Montana Daily Gazette, uh, you can send me an email. It's all the emails are underneath my um, underneath my my videos, and uh, you uh, you can support conservative news and get the word out to more Montanans than uh, probably you would with, with a lot of the big uh, the big newspapers. That's for sure. Again, thanks so much for joining us here. Until next time, this is James White for Montana Gazette Radio and Montana Daily Gazette and Northwest Liberty News saying bye now.